Hey guys, welcome to Gaming and Console Tech, back again with another video. I am Ash. Growing up, I was literally a Sega guy. That's how I grew up. Sega being, yeah, me all over. Now, that includes the Master System, the Mega Drive, amongst other things like the Game Gear, which wasn't too great in my opinion, but it was still great handheld for its time. That being said, because I was a Sega fanboy, it didn't necessarily mean that I didn't like other consoles. So much so that these days, as a collector, I pretty much collect any console I find that is worth the money that it's being shown at. That being said, today we're going to take a look at the Super Nintendo. So guys, in 1992 we got this, which is basically our version of the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, the US did get a different version, which I won't go too much into, but I'll put a picture over here somewhere, which, over here, which will show off that system. It was one of the most drastically changed consoles, in my opinion, between PAL and NTSC regions, which was a little weird, honestly. It was very, very strange, but this one, I think we can all agree, is probably the better looking system out of all of them. But there you go. I'm pretty sure Australia and um, the rest of Europe got this one as well. So I think the US kind of drew the short straw. I still love you guys, don't get me wrong, but I think we got the better system here. That being said, let's have a take a look at this system. Now, push it over. What we'll do is pop it like that. Now, this system in general is, like I said, one of the prettiest looking systems in the 16-bit era, personally. I absolutely love it. Um, here in the uh, UK, the controller was different as well, but I'll go into that a little bit later. Now, on here, you've got the power button. You saw the button flash. One just unplugged it, so, yeah, there you go. That's the power button. And then on this particular version, you have the eject button as well, which is basically a big, chunky piece of plastic. You can still hear me over it. There you go, yeah. And then you've also got the reset button as well, which is also... Just a push down button. This one does stick a little bit, but that's life, unfortunately. Um, I still need to kind of go around it and unplug it all. This wasn't a bit of a wreck condition when I bought it, but I managed to scrub it a little bit and get all the dust and gummage off it. Now, on the top, you also have your cartridge slot, which is, as it says on the top, PAL version, which you're really not going to, you know, cross them, I don't think. Just, yeah, that. Um, and then, like I said, on the top, you've got the branding over here with Nintendo, Super Nintendo Entertainment System there as well. Now, this is where things get pretty simple, honestly. You've got your two controller ports on the front, which is fairly standard. And then on the back, you have your power in, RF, and also your AV out as well. Now, in the US, this was literally a multi-out. You could use RGB and composite, I believe. This one I'm not too sure about. I've not looked into it that much. So, it could support SCART. I'm not sure. And you never know. But we'd see. Anyway, that's that. That being said, on the back you've got this big vent, which I still don't understand what that's for. I've still not figured it out. And I can't see this thing getting hot, to be honest. But... You know, then we'll turn it over onto the bottom, and you've pretty got your standard things. Right? What you will notice at the bottom is this little flap here, which, if we just pop open like that, is actually what looks like a serial port. Now, honestly, I still think this is all to do with the whole Sony and Nintendo thing back in the... Uh, early 90s where they were going to work together and then it turned out they weren't and then it all went bugger up. Now that that console that they seem to have been working on has been found, which was the Nintendo PlayStation I believe, I could be wrong, I think, but if you want to look more into that then there are plenty of videos on YouTube to take a look at, go and take a look. This in general is something very strange honestly, I'm not entirely sure what it was going to be used for, but speculation kind of aims that way that this was going to be the port that was going to be used for a CD add-on or whatever else. 
Um, there could be another reason for that, but that's just me. Now, let's pull this back. Now, honestly, I'm gonna, you can see my hand reaching for something. That would be the controller. Now, this when I bought it was in dire need of some TLC, which I eventually gave it. Now, we'll really pop that on there, look. Find the port, there we go. That goes in there, and then we put that there. Pop it on that side, actually. We'll pop it on there, and then there is the controller. Now, the controller was in a dire clean need when I bought it. It was absolutely scummy as goddamn hell. Wasn't going to deal with it. So I opened it up, cleared all the buttons. These two buttons were sticky as hell. They literally would not push down. So yeah, took them apart, did all that. These buttons as well, they're all done. This was the main problem, the D-pad. Now the D-pad was covered in what looked like jam or something, and it was just ridiculous. Um, I was not impressed, so I, again, took it apart, took all the inlays out and the rubber points for these, for the D-pad, and basically cleaned it out. So now it looks pretty much brand new, which I've had a lot of people on Twitter turn around that it, and say that it looks pretty. It didn't come like that, trust me. Um, but yeah, that was the whole... Um, issue there which was the problem and that was what I thought was going to be a big problem but it didn't turn out to be so yeah but yeah that is the Super Nintendo Entertainment System but honestly the actual console like I said I, I was a F Sega fanboy as a kid but this is pretty much one of those things that as a Sega fanboy I wouldn't have thought of back in the day but it still doesn't mean that I won't give those consoles love now as a collector so but yeah that is the Super Nintendo Entertainment System um, hope you've enjoyed it just a quick look quick overview quick gander at what I bought so yeah that's been me and this beauty I'm glad I've added this to my collection to be honest it's one of those consoles that I've been after for a while just haven't found it for the right price so I now have one. Now to track down a Sega and obviously, well, a Mega Drive and a Master System. So what I might do is get the Mega Drive and the Master System add-on for the Mega Drive. That might be a better bet for me. Seems of lack of room. But we shall see what becomes of that. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, and I shall see you guys in the next video. And if you haven't already, go and follow me on Twitter at RetroGaming2009. And join the rest of my followers on there because they are a great bunch. They are absolutely fantastic. And they're the nicest bunch of people that you could possibly come across here in the UK, in Australia. Brian from Since Spaces as well. They're all pr pretty great guys. So why not go and show them some love as well if you are new to my channel. So thanks very much guys and I shall see you guys in the next video. In the meantime, have a good one and happy gaming.